Hey friends, this is day 12 of Russian war against Ukraine. I'm going to give you a few updates of what's been happening. I skipped today if there's a lot of information. Uh, first, we're going to talk about uh, the war developments. Uh, then we're going to talk about the economic uh, development and pressure on Russia. We're going to talk about the informational war, which is really taking up right now. And uh, finally, we're going to talk about what's happening in Putin's inner circle and, and what's happening there because it looks like something is brewing there as well. So in war developments, remember a couple of days ago we talked about there was this uh, parliamentary session and we were thinking that well maybe uh, Putin will announce a general mobilization and uh, that did not happen generally but uh, according to Ukrainian uh, Ukrainian intelligence, we're seeing that uh, they're starting mobilizing reserves. And reserves is, is funny in Russia because it's not the same as in the rest of the world. Reserves are, um, are people who, at the end of their uh, conscription service, they have an option to sign this contract for reserves and they get some uh, additional monthly pay for it and then they get called in. Um, so a lot of experts are saying that Russia does not really have reserves because these people are not prepared to fight, they, they are not uh, taught. But we're, we're starting to see that without uh, announcing general mobilization, Putin is actually starting to pull in some of the reserves. Why he is not announcing general, general mobilization is because this is very uh, risky for him because protests are raging as as it is in russia this will be like an atomic bomb so to say uh secondly we're seeing that in moscow and in st petersburg there's a lot of protests that are being brutally oppressed the the riot police is being brutal even with the old people uh, we've seen we've probably seen these images that kids have been put into jail cells for overnight um, they're trying to be as brutal about it as they can because they realize they cannot have the internal situation rocked as uh, rocked as is because they will have two fronts to fight uh, at this point. But still, we see quite a bit of uh, brave Russian people um, understanding what this war will lead to, um, coming out in the streets and uh, and pr and protesting. Um, also, we hear that the head of Belarus defense headquarters had quit. So uh, there was this uh, document circulated in Ukrainian um, news sources. And I'll tell you about where I get my information too. Uh, but there was this document from, from Belarusian uh, headquarter, uh, head, uh, head of defense saying that I have been, basically I've been trying to talk to officers about invading Ukraine. They're, they're rebelling, they don't wanna do it. So having having no other choice i resign and uh even though this document exists and it looks looks pretty legit uh of course uh, the russian news is saying that this is all fake and, and he's still uh he's still working at it in the last few days there have been a great push from a lot of Be belarusian um patriots to try to influence th their soldiers not to go into ukraine they say you know flee flee the country deserve desert mothers go uh go and protest at, at the lines of of entry into ukraine because uh because we're seeing that their troops are ready ready to attack so there's something going on there's some kind of um uh, some kind of internal struggle going on and, and looks like their, their head of defense is, is resigning great news from yesterday uh there, there was this small airport in the in the uh, little town of chernobyevka where uh russians had taken the airport and, and were trying and they were using it as a base for their uh paratrooper uh helicopters to land and then go inland to ukraine um i think thanks to uh to american intelligence which passed information to ukrainians uh our forces have been able to come at night and using um using uh Anti uh, anti air missiles, I think, bomb uh, bomb all the all the helicopters. It was about twenty, which were, which were destroyed. Great operation because paratroopers are the main force of how they are trying to take over cities. And apart from that, we're seeing that in key, we're hearing that in Kiev, there's going to be another big wave, another big push to take over the city in in about two days. So these paratroopers are, are very important. That's why. Uh, disarming them, getting rid of their vehicles is important to folding those plans. Uh, and I already told you for, uh, about the Bellingcat report, which says that Russia has already 
put everybody they had for this operation into Ukraine, still haven't taken any cities. Uh, so that is indeed good news, and, and hopefully they will run out of steam before uh, they make another push. And then um, I told you a little bit about um, about the push to offer Ukraine uh, f fighter jets. Um, as you know, this is the second best option to closing skies over Ukraine. And next video I'm doing is about uh, is answering your question. So, uh, so we're going to talk about th that and well, isn't it nuclear war? But uh, but what Zelensky has been saying is if you cannot close skies over Ukraine, can you at least give us planes? And this was uh, first met with with approval, and and they were getting ready to give us about thirty fighter jets. But then the countries who were supposed to do it, they're like, no, we're, we're probably we can't do it because we need it for our own armies. Uh, of course, counting on uh, on Putin coming after them after if Ukraine falls. So now it looks like uh, the U.S. U United States had authorized these uh, Baltic countries to give us their old Soviet up upgraded Soviet planes, and instead um, America will give them the F class uh, planes to uh, uh, to their air force. So that seems like a good exchange, and looks like that's go going through. That's wonderful. Uh, I'm glad that's happening because Ukraine needs warplanes. All right, let's talk about the economic development. The bombshell from yesterday was that both Visa and MasterCard are quitting Russian market, which means that any cards issued in uh, in Russia will not work overseas and any cards uh, of Russian banks issued overseas will not work in Russia, uh, which means more economic isolation. And um, the cards that the Russians have now will work until expiry. And then after that, Visa is not going to process their transaction, which means that they only have their own internal system, which I think is called Mir, uh, which means the world, um, indeed, right, um, uh, to pro process process their transactions. So that's a huge hit on regular uh, regular population, and we're sort of starting to see why that is important. Uh, we're seeing that the West is is hitting. Uh, the, the oligarchs, the important people first, but then it goes down to the level of each individual individual persons person because be, because the West and, and us too, we we want Rush, regular Russians to feel what it's like to have Putin as their leader. So um, that's I feel I feel sorry for Russians because this is a huge a huge hit. They cannot travel anywhere. They cannot use their money anywhere. Uh, imports of a lot of uh, a lot of uh, Western or outside of Russia companies have been have been stopped, so they're really uh, gonna feel the pain. Uh, but at the same time, it's important because they might feel you know the pain. But in 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 Ukraine, civilians die, children die. I mean, some of those videos you see of uh, of paramedics trying to revive children and, and not making it, you'll do anything to stop that. So. Uh, that that's unfortunate, but uh, but I think it needs to happen. And then uh, we've al also noticed that in the last few days, Russia had really ramped up on the informational war, uh, which means that they're spreading a lot of fake information. So there is uh, an, an interesting um, phenomena that after t uh, day 10 of war, between the hours of like 5 and 8, th there's this uh, fatigue that comes over you and you're thinking, well, is this all worth it? And I thought it was just me, but it tur turns out that uh, it, it happens uh, to everybody. So at about this time, Russia is starting to inject all these fake information into our uh, new sources about, you know, this city had capitulated and and the forces, uh, Ukrainian forces are retreating uh, these positions. All of them, all of these are fakes. In fact, in the last two days, as uh, as told by the spokesman for Ukrainian armed forces, his last name is Arislavich, uh, he's saying that Ukraine had not lost any of their positions and Russian army had not advanced on any any of the positions. So actually the, the uh, situation is very good, but the fakes are, are perpetrating because this is psychological war. Maybe you've heard this term called a hybrid war, and this is what it means. You're sure that Russia is trying to uh, influence the outcome by very different means militarily, uh, media, psych psychology, uh, economic, economics, and, and, and other ways. So, so that's what uh, Ukraine has been warning their citizens about 
uh, for the last for the last few days. In fact, there's been uh, uh, information circulating that there is uh, Russia is preparing a deep fake video of Zelensky talking about capitulation and and uh, and fleeing the country. Uh, that's why the president has been online himself on video um, in his cabinet outside saying, no, 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 we're not leaving anywhere. And, and he's great at keeping um, keeping people's spirits up and himself being an example. As I said, uh, I, I don't really like him as a peacetime president, but he really stepped up. Good guy. All right, so uh, here's an interesting, <laughs> interesting thing that's happening uh, within Putin's circle. Of course, we don't know, but what we, we hear uh, sources. And before I start that, let me tell you about um, how I know these things. So it, it seems to me like, you know, you, a lot of you are commenting, well, this is, you're telling us a lot more than the news and, and uh, you know, can we really trust you? And how do you know this information? So you, you got to understand that in, in Ukraine, uh, there is, there's official sources of information, but there's a lot of, um, a, a lot of uh, people who, who uh, I should rather say channels on, on messaging apps like Telegram, uh, who, uh, who would aggregate data from people's phones, from, from official and unofficial sources. There's some data leaks from Ukrainian intelligence that they leak on purpose. So all of this data is integrated into these huge channels on, um, on apps like Telegram. And, um, and, and the way, the reason we know these are, these are true is because, well, sort of, first of all, you can, you can, you look at different channels and can I trust this? Do they know information uh, before it happens? And if it, if it does happen, yeah, this is a channel I can trust. These people would post documents that have been leaked by intelligence. They would post videos of, uh, of Russian soldiers, soldiers have been captured. So, you know, like this, this is real stuff. I mean, so a lot of this stuff is, is uh gauche. Like there, there's, you know, dead bodies and, and, and everything. And there's soldiers themselves shooting this video of capturing, uh, capturing, uh, Russian, uh, R Russian tanks and, and, uh, people carriers or whatever. Um, so, you know, this is, this is coming from the horse's mouth and then you sort of filter it and then understand what's happening. Most of this stuff does not get on Western media, like CNN, BBC, whatever. That, that's not, that, that's not happening. But, uh, seeing through, um, all of these channels and all of this firsthand information, you get to know a lot more. So that, that's how I know my info. Okay. So what's happening, what's, hap what's happening with Putin? First of all, uh, nobody's seen him go into Kremlin for, for about a week now. So usually what happens is he has these helicopter, several helicopters when he goes into Kremlin and, and, uh, um, and people who live near there, near Kremlin, say we haven't seen him in a while. So the word is that he's hiding out in his bunker, and um, and there's pictures uh, of the bunker. There is the floor plan. It's pretty impressive. It's partly under a lake, partly sort of underground, um, and he's. Um, they say that he's become paranoid. He's not taking any any meetings. Uh, he, there is uh, rumors about his defense minister Shoigu, who is trying to stage a coup and depose uh, depose Putin. Um, uh, there is actually a video of one of the oligarchs uh, of his who is putting who's put price on his head, and the price is uh, up to a billion dollars. And, and there's and he's saying there's uh, silent partners in this. So basically, uh, a bunch of billionaires uh, pitching in to. Uh, to assassinate Putin. So he's become paranoid. He's not taking any meetings. Um, but you'll say, you know, we've seen his press conference from two days ago. Maybe you've seen this uh, interesting press conference where he is gathering with flight attendants and telling them about the aviation industry and how Russia is going to battle sanctions and how they're going to keep their jobs. That's a video, right? There, there's him, there's a bunch of flight attendants and he's answering those questions. But um, I, uh, I challenge you to a few things to look, look at that video. You will, see a, you will see a few things. One is it's only females. There, there's, there, there's not a man in, in that room. Secondly, um, it looks like that video has been shot with a green screen. Uh, there's a couple of, couple of things that give it away. One uh, is w when, uh, when, when he's talking and he's you know, moving his arms around, uh, there is a about three second clip of that of that video where he uh, is moving his hand past the mic and his hand is going through the mic. So the mic is drawn on. 
secondly, if you look at his, uh, at, at a teapot, it's a glass teapot that stands on his, um, on his table. Uh, if you zoom that in, it reflects there is nobody in front of him. There's empty chairs in front of him. So what we think uh, had happened was that he uh, was giving this press conference in his bunker against the green screen and the people asking questions were shot um, on video separately and then the video was doctored together. So um, so we're, we're seeing that... Uh, that sanctions are hitting his oligarchs hard. Okay, and if you're asking, well, what do oligarchs have to do with anything? They actually are the ones who are financing Putin's regime. He is dependent on on them to do this. And we've seen that at least two of them, uh, one of them who uh, owns a company called Lukoil, and Lukoil is a huge uh, fuel oil um, magnate, and, and uh, he, he publicly denounced uh, the war, and he said, "No, we, we should look uh, look for other ways to um, uh, to negotiate and ask questions." So, so two of them have publicly uh, said no war, and, and we know that others are are looking for a way to either flee the country or uh, get their money out of Russia. And Putin's not let, letting them do that. Do it. Maybe in another video, I'll tell you about how these oligarchs came about, like from a from a Soviet time, and then these ultra rich people how how did they get there um, i'll talk about it later but all we need to know for now is that putin relies on his oligarchs to uh to finance his re his regime in uh in turn he gives them you know political economical pre economic preferences um to uh for them to make money so it's it's a uh, it's a tight-knit system almost like not almost like it's it's worse than worse than mafia, so so we know that he, Putin is afraid. He is irate um, again from from Ukrainian intelligence. We know this uh, that war obviously didn't go as, as he wanted to, and now he's afraid that his own defense minister is he is going going to stage a coup. So um, um, this last one is a rumor. Um, I've I've heard it more than once and more from uh, more uh, from than from one person. So uh, I thought I'd mention it, but. It's not. It's not for sure. Of course, this is not. Un, this is unconfirmed. So this is this is all all, all we know for today. Uh, in economic front, more and more companies are starting to leave to leave Russia. There is videos of of uh, Russian malls with just empty stores. There's there's not, not nothing going on there. So uh, within you know within a week or two, the economy is really going to suffer. People are going to feel the pain. And, um, and and hopefully that that produces uh, some changes. Okay. Meanwhile, that's it. Um, I I, uh, I thank you for your questions, comments, shares. I'm I'm glad these videos are helping. I'll be making more tomorrow. All right. Bye.